Hi, I'm Dana. Welcome to Made Every Day. I've invited a guest to be here with us. Hi, I'm Miranda. And we're going to show you how to make a pair of leggings. So let's get started. I've invited my friend Miranda here because, well, she loves to sew as much as I do, but she is also the queen at making leggings. I love sewing with knit fabrics. I'm almost always sewing with something stretchy, and when I finish a project, if I have even a little piece of fabric left, I'll turn it into a pair of leggings for one of my kids. And the great thing about sewing with knits is that it's really stretchy, so it's a very forgiving fabric. The steps we're going to show you for these leggings today can be used to make any size from babies all the way up to adult leggings. We're even wearing some right now. But today, we're each gonna sew a pair for our daughters. We're gonna show you two versions. I'm gonna take a t-shirt that I purchased at the store and turn it into a pair of leggings using a standard sewing machine. And I'm gonna use some fun knit fabric that I bought online and make a pair of leggings using only a serger. So let's start with the first version. Here's what you need. An adult size t-shirt or any knit fabric, one yard of three quarter inch wide elastic, and a pattern. Now let's talk about your pattern. You could purchase one, but what we like to do is use a pair of leggings that our daughter already owns or that she's grown out of and use that to trace a new pattern. And you can trace on any kind of thing you have around the house. I like to use pieces of standard paper. I have four pieces of paper that I've taped together here. I generally just grab a paper bag from under the sink and cut it apart. I've got a nice big piece of pattern paper to work with. So just use whatever you have. Be creative. You don't need any fancy tracing paper or anything like that. Now for my pair, I want my pattern to be pretty precise and close to what I already have. So I'm going to cut these leggings apart. So grab your scissors and you want to cut really close to the seams here so that's very accurate. Now if you want to keep the leggings that you're using and not cut them up, you can just go ahead and lay them out flat on your paper. Then we're going to fold them in half so that this side fold lines up flat. Wiggle out all those little nooks and crannies so that it gets laid out nice. And then these, these leggings have a yoga waistband which I'm going to fold down. So I'm tracing just around the basic legging pattern, and then we're gonna make changes to it later. I like to use a Sharpie, it's my favorite pen, so you're gonna go ahead and just trace right along the outside. Don't touch your leggings, because we're trying to keep these ones, but go as close to the edge as you can without touching it. And you can be pretty easy about the way that you do this. It's not an exact science, and we're gonna be able to make changes later. So go ahead and just trace it pretty basic. Now I'm gonna trace my pattern piece. So I grab my pencil, and I'm tracing right next to these leggings here. And I don't need to really add any seam allowance because I cut that out when I was cutting out the one leg. Keep going down, and when you get to the bottom, since I'm using an existing t-shirt, I'm gonna use the hem that's already on the t-shirt. So I don't need to add any length here unless I wanted it to be a little bit longer. And this is kind of like Miranda said, not an exact science. You could use a ruler if you want, but I find this is just a lot quicker. To swing it. Yep. Okay, now when I get to the top here, what I wanna do is I do want to add some extra because as you can see, this is folded under, it has some elastic in it. So I'm going to add, since I'm using three quarter inch wide elastic, uh, probably about an inch. Again, I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing it. Okay, and then last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on here that this is for a two year old. So if I want to use it again later, I don't forget what size it is. Yeah. And we're ready to go. Let's move to the next step. I've cut up my pattern piece and I have my t-shirt here. Now I'm going to lay it right down and match it up with the existing hem that's already on the t-shirt. And that is the great thing about using a t-shirt is that we don't have to hem it later, right? Yeah, super smart. Okay, so just cut right along these lines. Now I'm cutting two layers at the same time. So when I'm done, I have two mirror images of each other. Okay, just go all the way around. I find that it's really easy to find t-shirts in really large sizes at most retail stores in their clearance section which is even greater because then you're making a pair of leggings for only a few bucks. And you get these super fun prints that you can't find in other fabrics. Yes, exactly. Okay, now show me how you cut yours. Okay, I have my knit fabric folded in half. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it again so I can cut both legs out at the same time because I did my pattern on the fold. I've also marked that here so that I'll remember the next time that I use it. Perfect, so they're both cut on the fold, great. So I'm using a rotary cutter and a mat this time, which is my preferred method of cutting with knits. I'm gonna just cut right along the edge. You are really good at that. I am horrible at cutting out garments with my rotary cutter. Just a little bit of practice. Okay, and when I get down here to the hem, I'm actually gonna leave an inch and a half because I want to add this cool serger hem I'm gonna show you. Um, I didn't add that to the pattern, but I'm gonna add it here. So I'm gonna go about an inch and a half down before I cut that hem. 
And it's really important to make sure you pre-wash and dry your fabrics before you cut them out. They will definitely shrink on you if you don't. Okay, so now I have my legs cut out and this remaining rectangle I'm gonna use for the waistband. Now my daughter's waist is 20 inches wide and I want it to the waistband to hug her waist, so I'm gonna cut it an inch smaller. So I'm gonna go with 19 inches okay. and then six inches wide, so when it's folded in half, it's a three inch yoga waistband. And this ruler is already three inches, so that's nice. I'm just gonna cut right along the ruler's edge. I'm gonna flip it over. There you go. Do that's a good there. trick. This is why I brought Miranda here on set. Tricky, tricky. <laughs> okay. And then I need 19 inches. So I'm gonna keep it folded in half. We do everything in half sewing, right? Yeah, it's Cut it on the easier. fold, and I'm gonna do uh, eight and a half inches here, just to make it easy. Perfect. Okay, so now I have my yoga waistband and my legs. And we're ready to sew. Let's sew. Now we're gonna sew our first pair of leggings with a standard sewing machine. Next, Miranda will show us how to use a serger. So take your first leg, and with right sides of the fabric together, match them up right along the inseam. And then we're gonna sew right from the crotch all the way down to the hemline. Now it's really important when you're sewing with knits that you use a stitch that can stretch with your fabric. Otherwise, it's gonna break the first time you put the leggings on. So read through your owner's manual and find out what kind of stitches your machine can do. Most machines come with a standard zigzag stitch, but you might be surprised that you have some that are similar to what a serger does. My baby lock has a stitch called an overcast stitch, which I love using because it stretches a ton. So I'm gonna show you on my first seam how to use a zigzag stitch, and on the next seam, I'll do the overcast stitch. So bring your fabric over here, select a zigzag stitch, and I'm gonna do kind of a wider stitch. I'm going up to like a 2.5. Okay, let's get sewing. Do a little back stitch at the beginning, and then just sew right down the leg. When you get to the end, make sure those two pieces are lined up perfectly, because this is the hem of your pants. We're not hemming it again later. So make sure they're lined up well. Do a little back stitch, and then let's do the other leg. Okay, we've got our two legs sewn, and as you can see, they're gonna fit together real nicely. So let's sew the center seam together. Take one of your legs and turn it right side out, and then we're gonna stick it right inside the other leg so that the right sides of the fabric are touching each other. Go down to the bottom and match up that inseam that we already sewed. And then I'm not gonna pin the whole way around, I'm just gonna place one right here so that these two places stay together. We're gonna sew this in one seam all the way around. For this seam, I'm gonna use something called an overcasting stitch, and that's particular to my baby lock machine. I've played with all my settings and found that that is the one that gives me the most stretch for my fabric. So I'm gonna go over here and select on my machine, it happens to be stitch number 21, okay and my needle will adjust for me and we're all set to go. And because this is kind of a wider stitch, I'm gonna have my presser foot as close to the edge of my fabric as I can. Do a little back stitch at the beginning and just go all the way around. And when you get to these two seams where they come together, just go slowly, make sure your machine is getting through that carefully. Okay, I've made it back to the other side. You wanna do a little back stitch. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is just trim any of these pieces if perhaps your fabric has shifted a little so that our waistband is nice and even all the way around. Oh, that side looks pretty good. Okay, now we're ready to insert our elastic. I've turned my leggings right side out and I'm using some elastic here, three quarter inches wide. You can use one inch wide, you can use half inch wide, use whatever you have. And the great thing about these leggings is I don't have to create a casing for the elastic. I'm actually gonna sew the elastic into the fabric as I go. So take it and start in the back of your leggings. Line it up pretty close to the edge of the fabric, and then let's go to our machine. Start with a little back stitch. And as I sew, I'm gonna tug my elastic ever so slightly. I don't wanna tug it a ton, just a little bit so that it will make it slightly cinch up around the waist. You don't wanna really stretch the fabric underneath, just the part on top. Now once you get a little tail here, it's kinda of nice to use your left hand to kinda of hold everything in place. Okay, I'm back to the end, and what I'm gonna do is just overlap these two ends. You don't need to worry about finishing those off. Do a little back stitch, cut your thread, and then just cut off this tail right here. Right like that. Now, all we need to do is fold this waistband under, 
And you could iron that out and leave your leggings just like that. But what I'm gonna do is sew that same stitch one more time around the top, and then they'll look really nice and polished. So let's do that again. Go right back to your machine, start in the same spot, and we're gonna sew the same exact stitch. Now I'm stretching it just a little bit again. If you like how the stitch looks, you might use a thread color that makes that stitch pop out a little bit at the waistband. I'm using one that coordinates so it kind of hides my stitches in case I'm not very accurate. Okay, I've made it back to the beginning. Do a little back stitch. And let's see how these look. Oh my goodness, that is so adorable. Just made a really cute pair of leggings. Now let's see how Miranda's gonna do it on a serger. Now the great thing about a serger is that it will actually create a stretch stitch and cut the edge of the fabric and finish it so that you have nice finished seams at the end of your construction. So we're gonna follow the same steps that Dana did with her leggings, starting by folding one leg in half. Line up that inseam, and I like to start at the bottom here so that I have a little bit of a straightaway before I get to the curve of the crotch to get me kind of going on the machine. You can go ahead and start serging, get that fabric tucked under, and then just make sure that you're not cutting off anything that you want to keep. We're going to go around this curve. Just keep the fabric lined up with the edge. And then you can go ahead and just have the blade cut your threads for you. We're going to go ahead and finish the other leg now. Okay, the next step is to turn one leg right side out and then tuck it inside the other one, just like Dana showed you. Along that inseam. And just make sure that those seams you already did, the leg seams match up. I like to call this the saddle seam. You definitely can't serge over pins, so you wanna make sure you just use your hands to gently keep the fabric lined up as you sew. And now we're ready for the next step, which is adding the waistband. Okay, for the yoga waistband, we're gonna take our rectangle and fold it in half, sew along this edge so that it creates a loop, and then we're gonna fold it in half and line it up with our waist and sew the whole thing on into a loop. So, first thing is to match up this edge, and we're gonna serge right along here. Um, the serger will automatically give us a quarter inch seam allowance from where it cuts the edge to where the needle um, sews, so we just have to plan on that. Okay, so go ahead and start serging, and then just go right along this edge to create a loop. So now we have a full loop for the waistband. When we fold it in half, that will give us the actual height of the finished waistband that we want. So we said three inches high. And because I have a directional print, I want all of my berries to be going the same direction, so I'm gonna pay attention to that. So I'm gonna line it up with all of the print, all of the strawberries facing the same direction. This becomes the right side of my fabric, and then the inside of the waistband will be the wrong side. So I'm gonna think of it like that as I flip it over. So I have right sides together now. Inside, I have the waistband of the legs, and then on the outside, I have the double folded waistband that I just created. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this together now. Okay, so I'm gonna be conscious of all three layers of fabric that I have here, my leggings and both layers of the folded yoga waistband. As I start going, you can kinda just ease it in from the edge like that. And because the waistband is slightly smaller than the leggings, we're going to just do like Dana did and um, gently pull it as we attach it. And we're done, there's the waistband. Next we're gonna do a really cool kind of tricky cuff here for the hem. So at the bottom, remember, we left some extra fabric to create this hem. What we're gonna do is fold about a half inch under so that raw edge disappears and then we're gonna fold the whole thing back out. So you have your inside folded edge and the beginning raw edge. When we serge along this loop and flip it back out, it's gonna create a faux cuff just using the fabric we already had and it'll make a nice clean hem that looks really professional without having to do anything extra. So we're gonna go ahead and serge this one. So just ease it underneath the foot there. I like to line up the fold of my fabric with the edge of the plate. And you're working with kind of a small piece here, 
It's important to remember to keep the edge of the leg up like this so that it doesn't get lost underneath there. So you wanna be always sewing on the bottom and have the extra fabric on top so you don't accidentally surge over it. And there we go, one finished hem. You can use the same technique on sleeves or on the hem of, a, of any type of garment. We're gonna go ahead and finish the other leg now. And look at that, we have a finished pair of leggings with a yoga waistband, this cool cuff hem, and made using just a serger. And there you go, two cute pairs of leggings. One made on a serger. And one on a sewing machine in just a small amount of time. For more ideas and tutorials, visit madeeveryday.com. And for more information about sewing machines or sergers, you can visit babylock.com. Where it's all for the love of sewing. Let's go try these on our girls. Let's go.